Hello everyone! We are looking at some wizard stuff here. I've made this little eye of Agamotto from Doctor Strange and the Avengers crew here. Uh, my purpose of doing this was to show my students that we can use the laser cutter to stack layers to uh, create three-dimensional objects from 2D layers. Um, so we can stack that up and make some pretty cool stuff. And I used Fusion 360 to do this. So let's have a look at what I did here. The first thing I did was I um, inserted an image here. So I said, insert canvas. And I said I wanted it on this face here, right? So that's the one I want. And I went and chose my image, blah, blah, blah. I already have it in there right now. And um, we can see that right here. Right, that's my image I have there. I just found one off the internet there. And what I did here was I um, looked at this thinking that there was multiple layers here. So I kind of thought this outside part was going to be a layer, and then there's a stuff on top of that. So the first one I did was what I thought would be the first layer, which was this kind of two lines here with a ring around the outside. And so I used a little bit of artistic license here and didn't make things exactly match, but I made a circle and then using splines, I created um, these lines going across the center here. Kind of just eyeballing things, put some lines across there, kind of giving some detail there. And then I thought about the kind of biggest part of this being the second layer, which is these other two lines that go across the center here. So this part here, you can see again the lines going across are using splines and uh, put some little details out here, took in some license of what it really looks like there. Uh, didn't really try and include all the, the symbols, but also in this layer I put down two holes for uh, string or some sort of attachment there. The important part here is that this portion is going to get cut out. So this started off as a full circle going around the outside, and after that circle was there, I had to go through and trim this. So if you go to sketch, Let's, let's actually redo that, and I'll show you fully what I mean here. So I'm going to say Edit Sketch here, and I'll put my circle in there, and let's make that circle exactly the same. And what we have here was, I had originally something like this, but if I later go to cut this, that's going to cut this all the way through here, and those two parts are going to fall out. So this is true for the other part we just looked at as well. Um, we go in here and we say trim. We had to trim and get rid of these parts there. And the same thing needed to be done on all the parts you need to get rid of there. So over here as well. So let's undo that and get it back to where I had it. So you can see it's all disconnected here. Um, and then we have everything else there. All right, we'll say stop sketch. Moving on to the next layer, I was thinking that this layer was kind of the eye shape there. Um, you can kind of see it there. For the purposes of this, I made it connect to the outside here so that it wouldn't, oh, wouldn't fall apart, so that this whole thing was going to be cut as one piece. And again, just as we just mentioned, making sure that this line wasn't going all the way across here so that we could still have that inside eye part connected there. Um, and to do all these lines and making them all the same, let's see what that I did with that. Real easy trick here is if you go to sketch and you say offset. Oop. Let's undo that. Going back here. All right. We say click on what we want and we say offset. Now, I can say how far I want that, and it duplicates the same curve there. Real nice little easy trick to get things to look like that. 
All right. And stopping that sketch. Moving on to our next layer. Um, and with these layers, you'll start to notice I started making them smaller and smaller so that we kind of have a get it smaller on the back so it's not super bulky. Um, looking down at the next layer, this one got kind of crazy pretty fast here. So you can kind of see that I made a shape and then I repeated it around the circle. So what I really did there is let's start a new sketch and I'll show you real fast. I said, first I noticed that this circle was not exactly um, lined up the same. So I went over here and clicked three point circle, clicking to try and trace there. Now I had that circle. Now I can offset like we just talked about and make some other circles. And we'll offset again to kind of get this one. All right, and what I did, let's zoom in here. I made an X. And then I said offset to give that a little thickness here. And I offset the other one to give that a little thickness there. And then, I know I'm moving fast here, but I don't want this video to be super long. I said extend to extend that. And then I went to trim to get rid of my extra bits. And then I wanted this to be cut away here. Give me one minute, man. I'm finishing up a little video here. This teacher's bothering me, right? Ugh, they're the worst. Oop, let's undo that. Got distracted. All right. We'll say circular pattern, the objects I want to pattern are right here. And the center point is the center of that circle. Now I can make my pattern repeat here as many times as I want. And gets a little messy there pretty quick, but then after that, we have to go through and trim all these pieces so that the oops so that things don't fall apart when we are lasering this so that is kind of the pattern you want and to do all these other ones i essentially did the same thing so let's go back and look at what my original thing was here so you can see the pattern i got there when i did that repeated that again here and for the outside layer i was getting lazy i just put a bunch of triangles and repeated them part way around and made it go away because things were not centered here. Anyway, enough about that. Final layer is just the green layer in the back um, of this. So that green layer got smaller there in the back and was dyed green with some green pigment. Once I was done there, I went and exported these all as a DXF. And usually I, I use Inkscape, but Inkscape cannot handle uh, splines and curves like we have here, right? If we use the spline tool, Inkscape doesn't like it. So I used uh, Adobe Illustrator and pulled that into the laser. And in Illustrator, all the cuts had to be, so all these ones, I had to change the color if they were a cut part of the file, that needed to be a different color so that in our Glowforge, we can identify that as a cut versus a score. Um, and that would be also the same thing here. Anyway, hope that gave you a little guidance. You can check out my file here if you need to have a little peek at that. Um, enjoy. Bye-bye.